It's wrench versus wrench. Which of these two old rusty wrenches will get a new life? Let the challenge begin. Our first contestant is this really old and heavily rusted monkey wrench. I don't know how old this is, but it must have been left out in the rain for a long time. Challenge accepted. As you could imagine, the neural on this wrench is not going to turn. This thing is locked in place. So we've got to start by getting rid of some of this rust. My go-to rust remover is Metal Rescue, which is water-based. There's no chemicals or acids, and it's pretty much safe to everything except rust. So we'll cover our wrench in that and let it do its work. Now with anything this rusted, it's gonna take some time and patience. Metal Rescue needs a long time to get that rust off. And as time progresses, you can see how the liquid gets darker. That means the rust is coming off. Now, I actually let this sit for about 12 hours and then checked it. Now, most of the surface rust is gone, but I'm concerned about the rust inside this wrench because that's what's holding it together. Checking this neural and it is not budging. So, I'm going to take some 3-in-1 penetrating oil and spread that liberally into the gear and let it sit. Now it's time to use some force so the wrench goes in my vise and then I'll use another wrench and see if I can turn this neural at all. And it is not budging, not a bit. I probed a little bit with a pick and wow, this is rusted deep down inside here and this heavy rust is still in place. Well, I guess it's time to give this thing a little bit of a pounding. My chisel and a hammer. Let's see what happens. Nothing yet. All right, it's hammer time. All right, well, I guess we'll try some heat. Now fire up my blowtorch and heat up this wrench. See if that'll do anything. Heat causes atoms and molecules to move around more. They get a little crazy and take up more space and can expand metal. So if we can get some expansion, maybe we can free this thing up. You can see how the heat has caused the metal to lighten up. So lighten up, will ya? Let me slam the crap out of it. Ah, I'm not really sure what else to do. One last effort with more penetrating oil and then I'm gonna hit it hard with my hammer. <laughs> All I'm really doing is dinging this thing with a hammer. I didn't really have high hopes for this. Well, I think it's pretty obvious. Wrench number one has lost the challenge. This thing is pretty much just one solid hunk of rusted metal. So, on to challenger number two. Totally uncalled for. Okay, this is your standard run-of-the-mill adjustable crescent wrench. This one's made in China somewhere, and it's a big 10-incher. But nobody wants a rusty one, and this neural is sure to give me trouble. Okay, right off the bat, I know this thing needs to take a bath, so in it goes, and we'll see if we can remove that surface rust after a few hours. No reason to bore you with an excessively long time lapse, but as you can see, the surface rust is coming off. And then just giving it a check, and there was a little bit of rusty goop in a couple of spots, then I just used a metal brush and killed that. It's disassembly time, and you know what that means? It's time to unknurl this thing, or de-knurl it, or I'm gonna put some earl in there and see if I can loosen things up. After about 10 minutes, it was time to try to get that pin out. It's barely moving, so I'm gonna go slow and steady. I don't want to snap that pin or strip those threads, so I'm going to go slow and steady. And finally, the pin is out. All right, you neural you, get over here. Now this thing came out really easily and there's a little spring on the one end that keeps the neural from sliding back and forth unnecessarily. 
Then the jaw just slides out and that's got some rust on it. So over to the wire wheel and we'll remove that leftover rust. The wire wheel is great because it not only removes the rust, but also gives the metal a little bit of a shine. And while I'm at it, I'll clean up that pin and make sure it doesn't stick when I reinstall it. And then I'm going to give the head the wire brush treatment and you can see how this really does a great job of shining up this metal. There are quite a few pits in this metal, which I really don't like. So I'm going to take my flat file. This is a fine metal file and I'm going to try to work that and see if those pits go away and I'm really not getting anywhere. The pits are a little bit deeper than I would actually like to grind this metal off. I don't want to make it any worse than it already is. So the pits are staying in. I'm gonna go ahead and give the rest of the wrench a nice wire brush treatment and shine things up just a bit. And then I'm gonna do a sandpaper treatment starting at 220 and working my way up in numbers. Oh, and then there's this. Okay, got that taken care of. Now on to the head. There's some spots in between where the jaw slides that the rust isn't completely gone. So I'm gonna use my wire brush attachment on my Dremel and go to work on that. Looking good. Then I had to roll up some sandpaper and do this to get the rust out from inside where the jaw teeth slide. Then I wire brush the neural so we have a smooth opening and closing of our wrench. So what about that little spring you ask? Well, it is rusty and I'm just gonna replace it. I've got my little parts bin here full of assorted springs and I'll find one that's the exact same diameter and then just cut out a little double loop, which is all this is, and that'll work perfectly. Now it's prep time for our powder coating. So I'll use some acetone to make sure there is no grease or anything left on this wrench. And then I'm gonna start taping it up with some high temperature tape. I'm gonna cover pretty much the entire wrench and just leave that inside area, which will be powder coated, which means it's time to hang in my DIY powder coating booth. And then blast away. After a thorough coat, we're gonna hang it in the oven and let it flow out at 450 degrees for about five minutes. Once that's done, we drop the temp to 400 and go 20 minutes, and then we'll watch the powder coating cure. Time's up, which means it's time to pull it and let it cool down. Once it's cool enough to handle, it's time to unwrap it from its heat sensitive tape package. So we'll do that. And then we're left with the inside area of our wrench powder coated a nice bright red. Time for reassembly. I'll slide the jaw in. Insert that spring in the far end of our neural drop the neural in place, and then run the pin through to hold everything together. Now that is a smooth spinning wrench now. It opens and closes with just one finger, and I think it turned out looking pretty good. So wrench number two wins the wrench versus wrench challenge. Even though the first wrench beat me, I had a great time restoring the second one. If there's something you'd like to see me restore, leave it in the comments. And to check out some of my other Kip K Restored videos, just click one of the links on the screen. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.